Hey everybody, this video has spoilers for Kingdom Hearts 3, don't say it and warn you, bye! Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for some seriously elaborate plans next time you play. Maybe. We kicked this channel off with a disproportionate amount of Kingdom Hearts builds. Sorry everyone, I got excited. But now it's been over six months since we had some wild, messy, square, Disney hybrids, and I feel like I owe it to the OG subs to keep these trickling in every now and then. By far the most requested character from the series has been Zigbar, aka Bragg, aka Lushu. Obviously his mysterious lore and interesting fighting style is what has made him so popular. Just a quick Google image search of him will show you that, oh, oh, oh no, it's, it's cause he's hot. Shut the Let's start off by figuring out our goals for this build. First, we need to shoot good with more shots than LMFAO, a band whose entire career exists between the release of Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3. Next, we need to be able to teleport to get to the best vantage point or to keep away from angry teenagers. Finally, we'll make sure that we can live in an ordinate amount of time to see our plan come together. For stats, we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Rolling for stats is cool, just make sure your dexterity and charisma are good to go. Dexterity is number one, it's how we shoot and we shoot good. Charisma will be next. Got a bamf around and we'll need it for some bigger blasts. Intelligence after that, being a mastermind is one thing, but being a mastermind pretending to be a mastermind's number two, that's next level. Wisdom will follow, he's got great vision for someone lacking depth perception. Constitution is a little bit lower, but it's more painful to drop than strength, so drop strength. We just don't really need it. Zigbar is half Xehanort, so we'll call him a half elf, giving us plus two charisma and plus one in two other stats go for dexterity and intelligence. He gets 60 feet of dark vision, fey ancestry for advantage on saves against being charmed, and you can't be put to sleep by magic. You can grab two skills of your choice, take arcana and history, and the bounty hunter background for deception and intimidation proficiency. Kick things off as a fighter, first level fighters can grab two skills of their choice. Acrobatics and perception would be my picks. You get a fighting style, archery gives you plus two to attack rolls for ranged attack making sure you hit your target. I'd recommend a heavy crossbow that deals 1d10 piercing damage but requires a bonus action to reload for now. You also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 as a bonus action. Never while fighting Zigbar have I ever thought, boy this would be a lot more fun if he could heal himself, so obviously this is going to be pretty good. Second level fighters get action surge letting you make an extra action once per long rest. Remember how he always just starts shooting you for like 20 minutes straight and you can't do anything but run? Good times. Third level fighters can grab a martial archetype and the sharpshooter archetype is different than the sharpshooter feet, but kind of similar. You get three uses of steady aim, which lets you take a bonus action to ignore all but full cover on a target and deal an extra damage with ranged attacks equal to two plus half your fighter level rounded down. This is pretty good now, but it scales at a crazy rate with extra attacks at higher fighter levels. Fourth level fighters can grab a feat. The sharpshooter feet is different than the sharpshooter archetype, but also similar. You can ignore all but full cover on ranged attacks, have no penalty from firing at long range, and can take a minus five penalty to your attack roll to deal an extra 10 damage. Pairing this with steady aim, you can add 14 damage to a ranged attack, not counting your modifier. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice as an action, but you still need that bonus action to reload your crossbow. That is, until sixth level fighters, where you can grab another feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you ignore reloading penalties with a crossbow. You don't have disadvantage firing at melee range, so no worries about the teenager who keeps charging you, and you can make an attack with a hand crossbow as a bonus action after making an attack with another weapon. So if you want to go akimbo, you can go akimbo. Now we need to teleport, which is a spell generally, and the best spell list for us to use would come from Divine Soul Sorcerer, because it's also the best spell list in the game, and Lushu was a foreteller, so it kind of works. Kind of. For your cantrips, True Strength lets you give yourself advantage on your next weapon attack. It's not as good as just attacking twice, I know that, but the dude has a super scope, so accuracy spell makes sense. There also aren't really any other cantrips I'm into for Ziggy, so don't worry about it. For your first level spells, Magic Missile sends out three darts that deal 1d4 force damage and always hit their target in a 120 foot range. Just use these if you really need to hit, otherwise shooting people is just better. Featherfall lets you prevent up to five creatures from taking falling damage, so let's say you want to dramatically fall to your death off screen but not actually die, this is a great spell for that. 
As a Divine Soul Sorcerer, you're also favored by the gods, giving you 2d4 to add to a failed attack roll or a saving throw once per long rest. I'd use it for an attack to counteract that sharpshooter penalty. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with some sorcery points to recover spell slots and do cooler things with later. For your spell, Guiding Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next person to attack that creature advantage on their attack. You know that really big arrow that like bounces around the room? This is that. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Hasten spell lets you cast a spell that normally takes an action as a bonus action, so you can shoot people with the crossbow, then fire off radiant bolts or magic missiles. At least you could if your hands weren't occupied. We'll fix that soon. Distance spell doubles the spell's range. You're a sniper, so snipe it up. You can also learn second level spells. Misty Step lets you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action to get to higher ground or out of the melee fighter's range, up to you. Fourth level sorcerers can grab another feat. Warcaster lets you use somatic components for spells while holding something in both hands. It also gives you advantage on concentration saves and you can cast a spell as an attack of opportunity. So now, even if you're a Kimbo, you can still fire off those magical shots. For your spell, jump triples your jump distance for one minute, get that anime jump on. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Blink lets you roll a d20 at the end of your turns for one minute. On an 11 or higher, you bamf into the border ethereal plane, still seeing what's happening on the material plane, and then bamf back to the unoccupied space within 10 feet of the place you disappeared from at the beginning of your next turn. This basically makes you invincible on everyone else's turn when you blink, which tends to be when they attack you. Sixth level Divine Soul Sorcerers get empowered healing. We don't have healing spells, I just want Guiding Bolt. So let's take another cleric spell to justify the Divine Soul thing. A spiritual weapon creates a floating weapon that makes melee spell attacks for you, dealing 1d8 plus your charisma modifier in force damage. You can move it up to 30 feet as a bonus action, and it can take the shape of anything, so how about a crossbow bolt? This lasts for a minute and doesn't require concentration, so it's basically just extra damage, which is nice. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells. Dimension Door creates a corridor of darkness that lets you teleport up to 500 feet away and bring a guest if they're willing. Hasten Spell makes this a bonus action so you can get to the high ground and rain down fire. Eighth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, bump up your dexterity. It's a little too low for a sniper, those sharp shots might not be all that sharp when you subtract five. For your last spell, Haste doubles target movement speed and gives them plus two AC, advantage on dexterity saves, and lets them make an additional action each turn, but it specifies that it's only one extra attack and not an extra extra attack from extra attack, if that makes sense. This lasts for a minute depending on your concentration, and when it ends, the creature can't take actions or reactions for one round. Use this on yourself, duh, and fire even more bolts. Zigbar has a rash on his trigger finger. It's itchy. Seventh level sharpshooters get careful eyes, or careful eye in your case, letting you search as a bonus action. And you get a proficiency from a small list. Investigation would be useful. I'd go for that. Eighth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Cap off your dexterity here for maximum accuracy and damage. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest so you can forget the combos or spells people are throwing at you and enjoy that super armor. 10th level sharpshooters get close quarters shooting, letting you prevent creatures you hit with a ranged attack at melee range from taking reactions, so you can hit and run without worrying about opportunity attacks. That's nice for someone who likes to keep their distance. 11 level fighters get an extra attack for 3 attacks per round. If you pop steady aim, you get an extra 7 damage per shot. That's 42 damage with 6 attacks if you use your action surge, not counting sharpshooter shots, which could let you deal an extra 60 damage with those 6 shots, and ignoring your standard plus 5 modifier from your dexterity, which gives you an extra 30 damage. So, if you action surge, that's a minimum of 138 damage in one round, if all your attacks hit. That's a lot. Our capstone is 12th level of fighter and an ability score improvement. Bump up the charisma for more accurate guiding bolts. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, damage. Holy crap, can you deal damage? You can fairly consistently deal over 60 damage in a single round with one turn of absolute madness thanks to your action surge. You're also incredibly mobile. We talked about flying archers being scary in the Boba Fett video. And believe it or not, teleporting archers are just as scary. Finally, you've got a nice variety of damage, with force and radiant covering the things resisted by your standard piercing. But those things use spell slots, and you really don't have that many, especially if you plan on teleporting a lot. You're also pretty frail, most likely below 150 HP, which is bad for a fighter. Finally, your concentration is bad, so if someone hits you while hasting, you become a very easy target. But they'd have to be close to you for that, and they shouldn't be. Keep your distance and shoot the sharpest way you can. Just remember to teleport away when you have to. You have a grander destiny to fulfill, even if I don't know exactly what it is.
Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We do two builds every week. Come back next week for an evil king everybody wishes was good and a good king everyone says is evil.